division of Psalms, and again, we want to look at this particular passage, as we did this morning with our uh, 8 a.m. Um, service, we are just being led of the Lord. Uh, we can find that the Psalms Division 27, there is a note uh, page in your bulletin, and you can just jot some things down, hopefully uh, that will aid you and guide you as you go through the week in, in review. We invite you to stand to your feet if you're physically able. Psalms Division number uh, 27. Psalms Division number 27. We hope all of you will participate in our um, our fast on Wednesday. Uh, we want you to food fast if you're able, and if not, try to fast from something else in your life. Details are in the uh, program. Amen. And uh, so, the musicians looking good over there. Amen. They got that. They got that look. They look good. Amen. Look classy, amen. Look classy. Yeah, I like, I like classy. Psalms Division uh, 27 and verse 13 and 14. I had fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The psalmist says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, and he he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Grab your neighbor by the hand, look him smack dab in the eye, and just let him know this. Just tell him, even church folks, even church folks get, discouraged get discouraged sometimes. Now see somebody else and just tell them, just like I told the last one, like the last one. even church folks, even church folks get discouraged sometimes. Amen. If you believe that, put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Even children get discouraged sometimes. There is a legendary story told uh, by those in the prophetic tradition and it, according to this legend there was uh, the devil once had advertised some tools for sale at a public auction. And when the prospective buyers assembled, there was one oddly shaped tool which was labeled not for sale. Uh, to which uh, many asked the devil the question, um, why isn't this tool for sale? To which the devil responded, I can spare my other tools. Um, envies for sale. Hatred is for sale. Lying and lusting, they are all for sale. But I cannot sell this one tool. It is the most useful implement that I have. They asked Satan, what's the, what is it that you don't want to sell? And Satan said, I don't want to sell discouragement. Because if I can get discouragement into the heart of the people, then I can manipulate their minds to do what they don't want to do. And when we enter into our text today, the psalmist David is dealing with that same dilemma in his own life. He's struggling with that depressive dilemma called discouragement. Uh, David sagaciously suggests to us today that he would have lost his mind if he didn't overcome the discouragement in his life. Uh, David is teaching us today there's a time in everybody's life where you and I come to the committed conclusion that can, uh, discouragement has become our daily companion. If you're a child of God, if you're on the top side of the grave, if you're trying to do the best you can with what you got, all of us got to deal with the issue of discouragement. Doesn't matter who you are, where you live, doesn't matter if you're on the west side or the east side, doesn't matter if you live in Asbury or if you live in Colts Neck, everybody has to deal with discouragement. See, David, in this word before us today, he draws back the drapey of his own life, and he allows us to peek through the window of his private predicament and his vulnerability. David, before us, he admits to us that one time the pressures of life were so hard and heavy on his heart 
that he felt like giving up. David said, I had fainted and I almost gave up. David says that he had to deal with discouragement in his life. Now, this word faith that's here in the text has a multiplicity of definitions and it connotes two different thoughts. In the Greek, it, the word uh, faith is translated to mean one who is utterly spiritless and one who is weary and one who becomes exhausted, one, one who is weakened by life circumstances. And sometimes this word faith speaks in the physical context, and then other times it speaks in a spiritual context. In other words, we feel physically weakened when we're discouraged. And we feel that when we faint that our very spirit has been zapped from us, we feel the weakness within. See, David is sharing truth today because David is trying to let us know that there's something catastrophic that has happened in his life that has affected his mind, body, and spirit. Uh, David says his, his sordid circumstance that he had to go through it, it depressed him mentally, it drained him physically, and it weakened him spiritually. Wow. And the truth be told, all of us have been where Brother David's at in the text. Yeah. Yeah. See, all of us every now and then have felt like throwing in the towel because of discouragement. Truth is, if we were to pull back the veil on our own lives, uh, you could, uh, if you were to take a stroll, mental stroll out the back door of your existence, if you could relate to the fact that David in the text is speaking about your story. Because perhaps you can testify all by yourself. You, you have been weakened by the strain and stress of your, your responsibilities. And you found yourself in a dark time, in a dark place. And you were doing all you could just to keep that thing together. And life seemed hard and it felt uh, like life was draining you from the want and woe of responsibility. It was zapping every fiber of your faith. You just could not make it uh, from one day to another without waking up and feeling discouraged about your situation. And some of you right here, right now, may be looking at the situation that you're facing when you go back home and there is a sense of discouragement in your very existence. I, I mean, you did all you could just to make it here this Sunday morning because life has been, anybody ever been there except me? Discouragement is part and parcel of the people of God. Uh, but I want to suggest that all of us got a spiritual weight and hardness every now and then, then that makes us feel physically weak. The Bible refers to what David is encountering as a spiritual vexation. And in other words, when your spirit is vexed, you do not feel good about yourself, and you don't feel good about your situation. See, when your spirit is vexed, you can have food, but you have no appetite to eat the food on your table. When your spirit is vexed, you can have money, but you don't even want to go to the mall to go shopping. When, when your spirit is vexed, you can have gas in your car, and you don't even want to go anywhere in your life. When your spirit is vexed, you can have a silly posturpedic mattress, but you can't get a good night's sleep in your house. When, when your spirit is vexed, you can have a room full of people, but you still feel alone by yourself, even in the midst of company in your existence. It's not something physical, but it's spiritual that is within you that you're struggling with. That causes you to feel like you're fading in your own. Anybody ever been there where you just feel like you've been fading because of discouragement? But what challenged me about the text before us today is that this is David. This is King David. He's not a novice to the spiritual journey called life. It, this is David who feels like fading. He's not a neophyte. When it comes to the things of God, come, come on now, if anybody would be able to stand strong in the midst of the worries and, and the problems of society, it's King David. David was a warrior, David was a battler, but yet here in the text, David said, it got so bad in my life that I felt like faith. Uh, David, we know that David, David was one that had to face many fears uh, and he had to struggle with his own faith from time to time. But, but David teaches us that you are, can be a warrior and even warriors got to face feeling discouraged every now and then. You do remember it was David 
who had to protect the father's flock from the bears and the lions. It, it was David who had to kill the giant named Goliath. It, it was David who had to escape from the clutches of a madman in the person of King Saul. It, it was David who had fought against the violent rebellion of his own son Absalom. It, it was David that God knew it. David knew God and God knew David. David had a relationship with God. David is God's boy. David is God's running partner. David is the one that God himself is a man after my own heart. But, but David said there was a time in my life where the pressures of life were so heavy that I felt like giving up. I, I knew the Bible. I knew God. I, I knew the scrolls of ancient texts. But, but yet when the stuff hit the fan, the rubber hit the rubber, I had to deal with discouragement in my own life. Now David, parenthetically, this text is telling to teach us that David is not the only one that has ever felt like giving up. Come on, he wasn't the only one under the sound of my voice that felt like giving up. Because of the truth of the matter is, we too sometimes feel like throwing in the towel. You think you're cute and cool and all sophisticated right now, but if the truth be told, you felt like giving up at a time in your life. You can sit there with all the holy indignation that you have within you, but there was a time you thought about taking your life, putting a gun to your head, slitting your wrist. Uh, you thought about giving up because there was a hopelessness in your heart. I don't care how holy you claim to be right now. Everybody got to deal with discouragement. Every, you just keep on living life because you're going to get discouraged sooner or later. You see, some of us, we think that, 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 that we can handle it all with just God on our side. Well, well, David is the man after God's own heart, but yet David says when it got rough and tough, when I didn't know how I was going to make it, when the pressures of life were more than I could bear, I was not unscathed, but my heart was discouraged because I thought I was all by myself. Uh, David says sometimes our situations, they, they start out like little house on the prairie, but then they turn out to be nightmares on Elm Street experiences. They, David said my relationship with God did not exempt me from feeling discouraged every now and then. It, it's like like that song that was singing, I almost gave up. I said, I almost gave up. I almost threw in a towel. But David says, when I felt like I was about to lose my mind, something entered into my spirit. Something entered into my heart. And when I thought I had faded, oh, I believed in who God was and what God can do. But now what would what, what, what rest my attention about the text? Early in the 27th chapter, David, you remember, David said in the 21st, earlier portion of the 21st chapter, he said in verse number one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, David had a relationship with God. He says, I know God because he's the light and he keeps me. But in verse number 13, it seems like David has a paradoxical relationship with God. I notice that although he's familiar with the Father, it didn't keep him from feeling like faith. Even though he knew God, he still felt like giving up at a time in his life. And if you peruse the entirety of the 27th Psalm, you can perhaps see a few things uh, that may have contributed to David feeling like he does in the text. See, when I look at all 14 verses, I recognize that David uh, is going through some stress that was taking the brother out. But look at the word for yourself. The first thing David had to deal with was what I call no friendly reinforcement. See, in other words, David didn't have a friend in his life. The text, text makes it clear that David had surrounded himself with a bunch of wicked people and evildoers in his life. There wasn't a friend in sight. Y'all don't believe me. Look at the text. Verse number two says, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh. Verse number three says, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Verse number six says, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies. Verse number 11, teach me thou, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of my enemy. Verse number 12, deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me in such brood and breathe out cruelly. Uh, although all through 
through the text, he talks about enemies and foes in his life. He talks about wicked people. Look at David. He talks about adversary, but he never talks about an ally. He talks about adversaries in his life, but he never talks about associates. He talks about haters, but he never talks about helpers. He talks about foes, but he never talks about friendship. In other words, he feels as if he's all by himself. He feels that nobody can relate to him. He, he had not a friend in sight and his heart was heavy and his head became discouraged. And you need to understand, church, that to perceive the perception of loneliness is a strategy from the enemy in your life. See, the devil, he wants you to internalize your situation to make you feel like you're all by yourself. Because he knows the power of having a true friend. See, Satan knows if, if he can keep you feeling all by yourself, and he can cultivate in your mind a belief that since you are alone, then nobody really cares about you. And, and when you feel that nobody cares about you, you will become more distraught in your situation. And when you find yourself in distress because of your perceived loneliness, you would do just about anything to fill the void. As a matter of fact, you will do anything with anybody to feel, to take away that feeling of being alone. And, uh, you will start settling for less in your life to keep you from feeling alone. You, uh, you'll settle for less than a man.